I want to talk to you today about an addiction. It's one a lot of people suffer from, but a lot of people don't talk about. I'm not talking about meth or hurt or cocaine or heroin. I'm talking about food addiction. I suffer from it. And you say, well, that's not a real addiction. It can control your life and it can kill you just like any other addiction. How do people first get involved in food addiction? Take me, for example, very young kid, disabled, single mom. Her, my sister and I were latchkey kids for a long time, eight or nine years. My first eight or nine years, till I was eight or nine. And my sister had her share of troubles, so did I. We come home and instead of talking to each other or waiting and talking to mom about our day, we would find some comfort food in the cabinet. And that made us feel better for a short time. Same thing with drugs. It makes you feel better for that short time. If you heard snoring, that's my archer, my service dog. So it's a real addiction. And it's a very bad coping skill. And I'm not judging anyone. I'm there. I'm telling you what I know from experience. The eat to live, you only eat because your body needs fuel, is not thought of when you're a food addict. You live to eat. You go to a Christmas party or an art function, like I like my art group, and I found myself thinking, I wonder what food's going to be there tonight. Not, I wonder what new technique I'm going to learn. Or I wonder if I'm going to see my friend Ann. I wonder what I can eat there. You eat to, you live to eat, you don't eat to live. You get your heart broken or your feelings hurt. Do you use a good coping skill or do you not? Going to the cabinet for that bag of chips or the freezer for that ice cream when your boyfriend breaks up with you will make you feel good in the short term. But it can destroy your health mentally and physically. It's a bad coping skill. How does it develop? Well, exactly that. It's a way to cope with pain, with anger, with depression, doubt, fear. Instead of recognizing the emotions and the root and dealing with that, we deal with the symptom and try to make it go away. Isn't that how addiction works? So what do you do about it? What are some good coping skills? Tell me in the comments, what's your best coping skill? And do you think it's positive or do you think it's negative? My best coping skill was me was food. I would eat two or three plates full at a sitting. I could eat out, I would eat a grown man. I was over 300 pounds at my heaviest. I think 380, 385. And when I went to get the weight loss surgery, they made me go through counseling because of my insurance. And I'm grateful they did. I had some bad things happen in my childhood and I hid it by eating. I didn't tell anybody I was being sexually abused by the landlord or the landlord's son or whoever the heck it was. I ate. I hid it and I ate. What could else what else could I have done? I could have talked to my mother. I could have talked to a trusted teacher or friend. Hell, even my sister. I could have talked to her. I could have trusted her. Instead, I went for the comfort that a candy bar would bring me for the short term. 
that's not a way to live. You eat because your body needs fuel. And I'm still learning that. There were times in my life when everybody around me got to eat and the dogs got a meal. But sometimes I got very little or nothing. And so when the cupboards get bare, I panic. I overdraw my bank to pay for groceries that I may not even need because I'm scared of going without. I'm still fighting that, but I am fighting it. I talk to my doctors. I talk to my parent, my mother, my sister I'll talk to, you guys, I write. There's notebooks all over my house. I'm always drawing, writing, or doodling. I paint. I turn on the music. Put in my earbuds. Turn on the music. I got YouTube Premium. I love the music. And I put it on as loud as it'll go in those earbuds so I don't bother the neighbors. And I dance around the apartment, singing at the top of my lungs and playing with Archer. And that puts me in a better mood. I started doing exercises. I'm learning that yoga is a lot harder than I thought it was. That's a lot of stretching. But I'm finding ways to have fun. I found a DVD on exercising, standing up, punching. I always picture whoever's made me mad that week. That's who I'm punching out. I get my anger out with that DVD. I love my DVD that's Tai Chi. I'm not good at it, and I fall down, but I like it. I like going on my scooter to take Archer for runs. These are healthy coping techniques. Drugs, alcohol, food, they all try to dull the pain. That's the root. In my opinion, that's the root of any addiction. But does it really work? No. But can it kill you? Yes. I could not even... All right, I'll be honest. And this is going to be gross. But I couldn't even go to the bathroom and wipe my own butt. My mother had to come in and clean me up after I got went to the bathroom. I couldn't tie my own shoes because I couldn't reach them. I couldn't do my own laundry or make my bed because I couldn't stand up that long. I was in a size 26, 28 pant for you ladies. You'll know how big that is. I could wear a men's extra, extra large and be comfortable. It'd be a little tight. But that's what I like to wear because it's what fit. I couldn't buy a bra off the rack because they weren't big enough. I was destroying myself with food. And I struggle. There are days when I just want to eat and eat and eat. And I do. And then I feel rotten afterward. Not only because my body can't hold that much food anymore, but because I, whatever I'm going through, I handled it the wrong way. I have trusted friends I can talk to. They'll let me scream and vent and yell and rage. That's what you need. I have notebooks. See? Lots of notebooks. And that's only a small pile. There's some in every room, every drawer. I draw. Bad at it, but I like to try to draw. Paint. Sometimes I get in the shower and scream. Sometimes I grab some cookie dough and a spoon. Which one's the healthier option? Mentally, physically, Emotionally, 
all that matters. What are some good coping techniques? Let's take a look. I've mentioned several. Singing, dancing, journaling or writing in a diary, exercise, playing with animals, talking to others, make a video, put it on YouTube, and sit back and watch it when you're done. Be honest with yourself. Before you grab that cookie dough or that ice cream or that candy bar or hot dog and just start eating as much as you can because you want to feel better. Is this going to kill me because it's going to clog my arteries so bad I'm going to have a heart attack? Or I'll be so heavy that I can't take care of myself? How would you like it if you had a heart attack? A family member has a heart attack. And they're so big that when the ambulance comes and pronounces them dead, they couldn't put them in a body bag because they're so too big. I had a friend. He lived with my best friend Danny and I for a while. He was over 400 pounds. In fact, he's the one that had that black shirt that I wear as a painting smock. He had a heart attack and died. 28 years old. When the EMTs and firefighters came, because he died at our house, he died in his sleep. <clears throat> I was in the back room because I had to move his, his dog out of the way. And we were all devastated. And so the three, my, my best friend, her husband and I and the dogs were all in the back room. And I came out to see, you know, hold the door open for him. I was the most composed. And I heard one of the workers, David, uh, had caught an equina syndrome. He had broken his back. And he was wearing an adult diaper. And that was it. And he was really big, over 400. And one of the workers goes, my God, it looks like baby Huey. I was broken hearted when I heard that. I was stunned and hurt and angry. My friend had just died and they were making fun of how big he is. That's true story. Did I yell and scream and vent? No, but tears were pouring down my face. I don't want anyone to be humiliated because they have a problem. It's no shame to seek counseling. I've been in and out of counseling for a very long time, over 10 years. I had a nervous breakdown in 97, 98. So I started counseling in 97. I only just in 2021 got to where I was mentally healthy enough to step back from the counselor, but they're still there to catch me if I need them. There's no shame in asking for help. Don't get yourself trapped. I don't care if it's food addiction, or drugs, alcohol, sex, whatever. Don't get yourself trapped. Get help. Anybody can get you help, but you've got to ask. Don't eat yourself to death. Don't let someone say that about you. Don't let your family be devastated because your addiction has a hold so bad. This last month, I went grocery shopping with my mom, not knowing that my I get a healthy benefits food allotment, that they were going to send me a new card, and my card was uh, no longer valid. I didn't know that. I had called, and they had said I had the money on the card. So we went to Walmart. And we grocery shopped, got a few other things I needed. 
And she tried the card and it didn't work. Her boss tried the card, it didn't work. I started having a panic attack. There were people behind me, there were, my mother was embarrassed, and I melted down. I didn't have the money to buy it, but I overdrew my bank account anyway, knowing the bank would pay it because I was terrified to go without the food. When I should have just walked away, knowing that I had a few things in the freezer that were single serving that would get me through the next day or two. But I didn't. I let my fear, my addiction, and my lack of control take it. And I made the wrong choice. Bank account's good now. I fixed it. But that doesn't stop. The fact that I let the addiction to food and the fear and the panic attack and the anxiety control me to make the wrong choice. It's going to happen to all of us. We're all human. Even animals get depressed and fearful. It's how you handle it. I didn't handle it well. Maybe the next time I can. Learn from my mistakes. And if you need to talk to me, send me a comment. Hey, can we talk? Or hey, do you have any idea how I can help so-and-so in this situation? If I have any ideas, I'll give them to you. Write in a journal. No one has to see it but you. You can write it and shred it. No one has to see anything like that but you until you're ready. But ask for help. I hope this helps somebody. Just one person. That's all it needs. To see a change and to make good on it. Goodbye, everybody. Till next time.